Oh no, Daniel. <laughs> oh yes. Oh no. Oh yes. Oh no. What is happening? Hi, and welcome to the Savage Podcast. I'm Rose, also known as Cheap Lazy Vegan on YouTube. And I'm Daniel, one of your favorite guest stars on Cheap Lazy Vegan's YouTube channel. We're two friends who love to talk about the latest trending topics. So get comfortable and join us while we give our savage take on just about everything. You are currently listening to the previous episode of this podcast, but if you would like to listen to this week's episode and get some exclusive content, go over to patreon.com slash the savage podcast. Hello, hello. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the Savage Podcast. <laughs> the Savage Podcast. <laughs> uh, <laughs> welcome back, you guys. We're back with another uh, I feel like episode. It's been a little while, has it? Like, Why does it feel like it's been a while? Did we record last week? We may have done that a pre-record. Did we do a pre-recordation? I can't remember. No, I think we did it last week. I can't remember. Guys, anyway, we don't know what's going on. We don't. Brains We're, are fried. Summer brains. You summer know. brains. Let's. Yep. We'll blame it on summer brain. The summer's flying by so fast. Oh my it's god! Crazy. It's end of August. What is happening? Well, it's not end. It's mid. Well, mid to end. Mid is different. It's between mid to end, Daniel. So are you it's, saying, are you saying I'm, I'm, I'm oh in Oh no, it's August 13th. Sorry, you, I thought it was August. I thought it was actually mid to end. So you're saying I'm at the end of my 30s? You're in your late 30s, yeah. No, I'm in my no. mid. <laughs> my mid rose, okay? Late not. 30s. I remember when I was like 26 or 27. Yeah. Um, I think it was Krista. <laughs> Someone was like, you're in your late she 30s? Was like, yeah, she was like, you're in your late 20s. And oh. I was like, late 20s? I'm in my mid 20s. Yeah. yeah. I feel like late is like eight and nine. I think so. Late is eight, right? So anything after sure. eight and nine is late. And then mid Let's is... Let's see here. Yeah. Because seven would be still closer to five. Yes. Than it would be to... Yes. <laughs> exactly that. So we're mid thirties until 38. 38. Then we're late thirties. Yeah. And then, at, then we're forties. Which is fucking insane because we're already... I'm turning 36. You're already 36. How the fuck have we turned... How, how are we 36? How well, did this happen? We've lived When's on the this... maturity kicking in? We, <laughs> the maturity is not <laughs> kicking in, Rose. I always wonder that too. I'm like, I, I thought by now at 36, I'd like have my shit together, have my place organized, ha have a like, good routine. Well, you have like some of, like you have some shit together. I do, like, but I mean. But it's in terms of our like, you know, maturity. What, what, no, what I was meaning about my th stuff together, and I feel like you can appreciate this as well, Rose, is <laughs> for example. Is this an attack? Yes. Okay. Um, being prepared for a trip, packing, having our houses like, you know, our houses are clean, but like, oh, they're like also we're like, like a disaster. Yeah. I mean, we're just going to be disasters. Like, I think that's just the state like, of our world. I think so. Like, we're just those people. Well, like, I mean, when you're, you know, when you're young and you go to like your friends' houses, like there are some friends where you're like, oh, okay, it's like a mess. Mm. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> but I don't want to be that. Yeah. So we'll figure this out, Daniel. We'll figure it out. Well, we got a few more years before we hit our 40s and then it's no longer acceptable, Rose. Well, you don't even want kids. So it doesn't matter. You could be a mess forever. Do you want kids? Well, I don't know if I want kids <laughs> or not. I'm on the fence still, Rose. Oh, you're still on the fence. I yeah. thought you had kind of decided. Well, I just, I, you know, I thought about it and like a part of me is leaning towards not, but I'm still on the fence. But like the reason I'm leaning towards not is like they are a lot of work, Rose. Like I know they a are. Lot. Like a lot. I know. God damn. Like, does it scare you? Like, which part scares you the most? Well, the fact that, like, your life, literally the life that you have now will completely change. Okay. That's what yeah. scares me. And it's like, you no longer... I know. It's like a lot. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm, you know what, I know I have lots of friends that are parents and people that love being parents and I'm not knocking parents at all. I'm just reflecting on myself and I'm like, oh my God, everything, because cause I, I, I mean, overall, I have a pretty good life. Like, I'm able to do whatever I want, whenever I want, uh -huh, which is Which is something that we take for granted. Exactly, mm -hmm. that we do. And then as soon as you have kids, well, that's not the reality anymore, right? Like, you now have to oh yeah take a step back and be like, you know, you can't be staying out having drinks. You can't be just going out for dinner on the whim. Yeah. You can't be just going to the gym whenever you want. Like, you have to plan <laughs> so this shit out. That's the biggest concern for you. Just like, kind of, like kind of your life changing. Like, well, I, it's a big yeah. change. Like, a it is a big change. I'm, not, like I'm your, not knocking. I'm just asking. It's like your life completely changing. That's what's Yeah. That's okay. What's, that's okay. What, interesting. Yeah. Um, but then, okay. So, like, after, because I feel like, like, okay, yes, it's probably going to be when, once you have kids. At least for the first 20 years, probably longer, because, like, let's be honest, we're still, like, adult children at this point. And, like, if our, because, like, we're millennials here, 
And I feel like millennials already grew up slower than like our parents' generation. Mm. Cause like our parents' generation, they were like married kids, all this stuff by like 20 something, yeah. had a house, all this other stuff. So I think by the time we have kids and they grow up, like they're probably fucking going to be living with us until they're like 50. Yeah. <laughs> That's another so scary like fact. Commitment. That's another scary fact, Rose. I think what scares me though, more so than like your, my life changing, which is scary. Yeah. I think it's more so like, what if I raise, like, I'm worried about the outcome of this child. Right. And like people talk about like, cause obviously like, you know, when they're babies, like they are difficult, like don't get me wrong. Mm. You know, they're very like, you have to watch their every move, like all that stuff. And I'm yeah. sure there's like, challenges to that, but that part doesn't scare me as much as like, you know, are they going to get bullied in, in high school? Like, yeah. Are they going to be the bully? You know, are they going to be like some fucking depressed child? And I have to like, you know, like it's going to be very challenging. You know, are they yeah. going to have like extreme anxiety? And I have to, you know, like those kinds of challenges. And I think, I think the hard part is, is you can't predict that because I can't predict it. I can do as much as I can. Exactly. But like, you don't know what's going to happen. Cause we can look at like ourselves and our siblings and things like mm-hmm. that and how different all of us are. And it's yeah, like, everyone's different. We're all kind of raised the same. We have the same parents. So it's like it, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's what scares me. Mm-hmm. Like you can't control, you know, their lives forever. Nope. And you can't control the outcome. And you of, can't try to control their lives because then they'll like resent you. Passing on your <laughs> trauma to them. And then <laughs> oh God. And then they're like, you know, traumatized. And you're like, fuck, I gave you that trauma. No nope, kids. This is mom's special juice for the morning. <laughs> <laughs> God. Anyways, guys. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Welcome to the, well, I think it's good that we think about these things because so many people don't even think about any of this and they just have kids. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, like, it's, it's fu- why is it so difficult? It's funny that we're, we're worried about very different things. Yeah. We're worried about very different things. Like, for me, I mean, I'm worried about that as well. Yeah. I'm not, I, of course I'm still slightly worried about what you talk about, but yeah. I think in my mind, I just think to myself, I'll just do what the best that I can. Yeah. And like, you know, they're going to be a product of their environment right. regardless of what you do. Like, right. they're going to go to school and all you can do is prepare your kids with like the best tools that you know how to, to help them give the, give them the best chance to be a good person. Right. To do all those things. Right. But sometimes no matter what, your kid could end up being an asshole. Yeah. It could be all of these things and it's out of your, slightly out of your, your control. But I think you're better at kind of detaching from that kind of thing. Whereas I would be like devastated yeah as in like if my child was like i don't know something bad happened or like my child was a criminal or like i don't know you know something crazy yeah yeah yeah. i think i would be like i would internalize that like way more yeah for some reason it would still obviously bother me but you're right but you would be much better at detaching i would be like this fucker (laughs) you'd just be like i did the best i could which is like probably a healthy place to be yeah i would be like oh traumatized forever god damn rose you'd be an emotional woman god damn i is i is very emotional anyway guys uh welcome to the savage podcast welcome to the podcast guys um if you were thinking of having kids hopefully we scared you from it (laughs) i'm just kidding um we just want to say a big thank you Mm -hmm. to rebecca k for joining our patreon family woohoo yeah which one do you want to talk about first i kind of want to talk about the um the australian breakdance okay you're really into this australian breakdance yes so i haven't seen this video yeah so what we're gonna do guys is we're gonna um because i think this the, <laughs> Wait, video, the video's I, on here right it, oh yeah here we go there's a few clips here and i don't want to see anything about it but i want to watch the video yeah so so rose you just watch the videos and come to your own conclusion this is at the olympics yeah this is the olympic break dancing okay <laughs> wait are they competing here? Yeah, this is one of the this is one of the Australian finals. Is breakdancing part of Olympics? Oh no. Oh no, Daniel. <laughs> oh yes. Oh no. Oh yes. Oh no. What is happening? Is this a woman? Mm-hmm. Oh my No. 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 She is in the Olympics? Yes. But like... How is she in the Olympic Olympics? But this is it. So like... Oh my... Because the thing is, guys, this so... This is a joke. This is a joke. She's in the Olympics? She's literally in the Olympics. Oh no, so, Australia. What happened? She has to be the only... Only... No, but... 
I thought you have to qualify for the Olympics. Mm-hmm. You do, apparently. It says Miss Gunn is so the person that was competing. So, guys, we just so watched. So, this went viral. Yeah, this went super viral for all the wrong reasons. Oh, no. Basically, everybody <laughs> is ripping Miss Gunn, who is the com- com- competitor, a new one, because they were just like, she basically at one point does like a little bunny hop. Oh, and no. Like, don't get me wrong. I've seen some incredible <clears throat> breakdancing mm-hmm. before where they're like doing some amazing things. And like what she's doing is it's like very, um, I don't know. Like, it's giving. I feel like I've seen better breakdancing in like high school. Yes, I have. You know, like my- I've seen some pretty good breakdancing in my lifetime. Yeah. This is not one of them. It's just like awkward and weird and like what is happening? Yeah. At one point she's lying on the ground doing some weird like walking in a circle. With yeah. Her but legs. like it doesn't even look smooth. Like how does she make like I don't want to be mean but like how does she make the Olympics? Yeah. It's crazy. So a lot of people, so there's the, the internet's been torn about this story. Oh, really? So some people, well, not torn in terms of the performance. Everybody's <laughs> we like. We all agree it was yeah. shit. Everyone's like, that performance was ridiculous. But some people are like, she shouldn't have been there, blah, blah, blah. And other people are like praising her and being like, hey, she just wanted a free ticket to Paris. So good on you. How did she even, it says Australia's top ranking breakdancer. Australia. Is breakdancing a new sport in but your... But she also, she works for Sydney University as a creative arts researcher specializing in the cultural polit- politics of breakdancing and has a PhD. Okay, first of all, um, you don't need a PhD to be a good breakdancer, this, clearly. This is... Uh, okay. Breakdancing is not about... like. <clears throat> It's fine if you know the politics of breakdancing, mm. but that doesn't make you a good breakdancer. No, no, for sure. For sure it doesn't. So This is so bad, <laughs> Daniel. It's like so bad. It, it's giving um uh like a really I don't know what it's giving. It's giving it, white white girls can't dance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Or it's like giving soccer mom yes. went, went to the went to compete in a high school breakdance yes, competition. Yes, soccer mom steps into the breakdancing circle. Well, yeah, much to her child's dismay. <laughs> mom, get out of there! What are you oh my doing? God. It's so bad. Um. So guys, so what are people saying? They're saying basically like, oh, it's fine that she went there. Yeah, some people are like, oh, she- how did she even get in? Is my question. But- I don't even blame her necessarily because she probably thinks she's good. Yeah, but like. Because don't you have to qualify? You do have to qualify, Rose. You have to qualify, you qualify for all of your, your competition and your stuff to get into the Olympics. So do you qualify in your country and then they decide, they're like, okay, you can go. Yeah. they would. Pick, okay, so they, they Australia would pick, is at fault here. They would, exactly. <laughs> they, would, Australia. they would pick teams just like in Canada. There'd be like They've just been, you know, stuff. they're just way too down under. Like they don't see the rest of the world. They're, you know? way, they're, they're down under there. They're down know? under there. It's, yeah. Like they haven't seen breakdancing ever in life. Apparently. This is the best one they, they've got. Like maybe she was like, maybe the, for some reason she like just messed up on this performance or something, but I don't know. It's like, you know, and also like when I think Australia, mm. the last thing I think of is breakdancer. Yeah. Especially not like a white Australian, you know? Oh, breakdown. Okay. So following that news, is yeah. it, is it related to that? Well, I don't know if it's related per se, but, and then also people are saying because of this performance now they're like, okay, she basically, it, okay. It's not we down to her. That's what it yeah. is. But it says that breakdancing has been removed from the 2028 games. Yeah. So Olympic breaking made its debut. Oh, so this was the first year it's ever been in the Olympics, oh, but God. it won't make a return anytime soon. Um, so basically they decided to add in breaking in the hopes that it would attract younger social media viewers and a new level of excitement to the viewers. Well, clearly mm. that did it for the wrong, wrong reasons. Yes. <laughs> well, well, definitely. <laughs> there's been some viral moments in this, in this, uh, Olympics, mm-hmm. <clears throat> a couple of them. Uh, so obviously the, the French man with the massive wiener. Oh yeah. <laughs> that knocked off the pole. Your favorite story. I love, I, I, I wa- love that one. I've watched that one on repeat a few times, Rose. <laughs> Um, there's like, oh God, there's so much stuff on the internet. There's been like also the Italian swim team because they're fucking hotties. Right. There's been, um. I need to see this Italian swim team. Yeah. Look at the Italian swim team because they are, one of them is like six foot three, like a fucking Italian God. <laughs> um, oh yeah, there they are. Yeah. I, I understand the do you hype. See, do you, I see the hype here. Do you see why people are really watching the Olympics? I see. You know, it's funny how like these old people <laughs> that probably decide what goes on in the Olympics. They're like, mm. let's add in break dancers. Like that'll attract the young crowd. No, just add in some hot people. Yes. Like no one cares. I'm sorry. Like I feel like even if you're into break dancing, mm. 
Like, would you be watching Olympic breakdancing? Maybe. Like, if you're big into Maybe. it, I think. But, like, it's breakdancing such, like, a street kind of, like, you know, it's, like, cool. It's, like, yeah. fucking, you know. It's just, like, Olympics makes it almost, like, uncool. Mm. I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm being weird, but. You're being a millennial. I'm no. being a millennial. <laughs> <clears throat> but, uh, hey, clearly they're m- getting rid of it, so it didn't yeah. work. It didn't work. It didn't do what they intended. But I think, you know, they've mm. already had their viral moments from other stuff. So they're probably like, you know what? People like to watch just because of all the fucking hot. Because literally everybody that's in the Olympics <laughs> is generally, like, I don't know, 18 to, like, 25 or 26. All peak athletic performance. Mm. Beautiful. I was watching the women's, I think it was the women's running or hurdles or something. We were watching it at the office. Yeah. And like literally most of them look like they could be models. Yeah. They're all like fucking gorgeous. Especially if they're like runners. They're probably like super lean. Lean, beautiful bodies. Long limbs. Yeah. Fucking tall. I was just like, (laughs) is this a fucking joke? And this one, this one girl came out and no, they were doing like running jump to see how far they could jump. Okay. And this one girl came out and honestly, she's one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen in my life. I was like, what the fuck is going on at the Olympics? (laughs) Well, you know, yeah, they're young, hot, fit. What are you going to do? Should we go in 2028 to wherever it's held, Rose? Should we go and be spectators? I mean, clearly we can enter as break dancers. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, break dancing won't be part of it. Mm. But I think anyone can enter as break dancers at this point. Yeah, I kind of want to get tickets and go. Like, I think it'd be Oh, you cool. actually want to go to the Olympics? Yeah, like I think it'd be kind of cool. I'm sure it would be, but it's probably really expensive to go to the go to the Olympics. Do you I know where it is at in 2028? No, I would imagine like if you think about where it was like Paris, your hotel was probably be really expensive because yeah. the hotels would be crazy. Where is it going to be? Oh, it's in Los Angeles. Never, really? Uh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> if it was somewhere It'll cool. It would be extra expensive as well. I know. If it was LA. somewhere cool, I would go. <laughs> <laughs> sorry no offense to, to the LA Sorry folks. to the LA folks, guys. But I mean, I haven't even been to LA, so I guess I can't really say that. It's all right. But from what I've heard from people that have gone, Rose, um, <laughs> and just from other people, it's just like not a place that I'm like mm-hmm. really keen to go myself, to be honest. I have no yeah. no desire to go there. Um, well, if you go to the if you go for the Olympics, though, mm. you'll probably just be focused on the Olympics. True. But I don't really care about the Olympics, so. But you don't want to see beautiful people in Speedos competing and stuff, Rose? Not really. <laughs> you know, like, sure. I mean, I can be like, oh, OK, they look good. And then what? Well, Rose, Rose <laughs> there, there'll also be alcohol there. Okay, <laughs> now you're selling me. No, there'll, there'll be some. There'll be some wine. You can have a nice glass of wine. Watching, watching the, the games. Watching the games. Maybe one day. I, w- I do wonder how expensive it would be to like. I think like some of our friends went to the mm. to the Paris one, but. But I think I think the most expe- I think what what is the expensive part? Maybe the, some of the tickets are a little bit pricey, but I think the main thing is like obviously yeah, accommodation, accommodation flights, there. exactly, because it's all going to be jacked up because of the yeah, everyone's yeah, yeah. going there, right? Exactly. So I think that's the piece that will be mm-hmm. expensive. But anyway. Okay. So. <clears throat> Next story. So Kamala Harris, Kamala Harris. Uh, I think the thing that you wanted to talk about was like the thing where she kind of dismissed the pro-Palestinian protesters. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. So there was like, a, I did watch that clip as well. So yeah. she's trying to do this speech and she basically was like, I don't know, in, uh, trying to do the speech. And there was like a bunch of pro-Palestinian protesters mm. that were shouting, you know, because mm. they were protesting. And then she kind of was like, I'm speaking. She kind of like snapped at them a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, I don't know what 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 do we what do we think? Well, I think it's just <sighs> the thing is people need to understand that as much as it would be much worse if Trump won mm. on the issue of Israel and Palestine, I don't think anything's going to change under Kamala Harris. No. I'm just going to be fucking honest. This with is you. the thing. This the United yeah. the United the, the United the United States, States of, America of America in general <laughs> is so. Pro Israel, pro Israel. That no matter what, even if you're a, even if you're a Democrat yeah. or a different party, mm-hmm. like even a lot of the Democrats are pro. Yeah, pro and because Israel. a lot of them are bought by APEC, which is like the so it stands for <clears throat> American Israel Public Affairs Committee. So it's like this giant, uh, I don't know, group, mm. and they fund. Uh, they basically pay politicians. So they're like a bunch of lobbyists that right. pay politicians to basically never criticize Israel, never uh, say anything against Israel. Yeah. So tons of uh, p- 
politicians in America, including mm. Democrats and Republicans, are bought by APEC. Right, right, right. Yeah, which yeah. is why, and I don't know if Kamala is, but like this is why they can't do anything. They can't say or do anything, and yeah. instead they send money to Israel to continue this, this like war, this fucked up shit, this genocide. Yeah. Sorry. Um. So yeah, but then I actually saw a piece of news today that was like that Israel's like kind of crumbling mm. because like, obviously even though America is like sending the money for weapons and all that stuff, mm. it's like in the public eye, like they do not look good. No. Right. Because then it's, and the war is still continuing. The genocide is still continuing. Like how many people have died at this point? A lot. So it says here, Israel is falling apart and American leaders are in denial. Mm. So Israel's inability to solve a Palestinian issue, except by apartheid and massacres has fosters, fostered a fascist and racist political culture in the country. But this truth is kept from Americans. Mm. So essentially like it's not, it's like imagine a society where it's like the whole government, like all they're focused on is like fucking killing a bunch of Palestinians Yeah, and this entire war, they're spending all this money mm. on weapons and blah, blah, blah. And then now like a lot of other countries, not enough mm. to be fair but some countries have said like you know they're they're kind of cutting ties right yeah and also like even think about like investors like even just from a completely economic point of view yeah it's like let's say you have operations in israel like let's say you're a tech company or you're whatever company yeah it's like there's so much political instability in that er gonna move area out. that you're gonna be like you know what this is just not worth it yeah and also add that on top of that add like the political you know the ethical element of it like yeah. i don't want to support a country that's like committing a genocide so it's like mm. even if you don't believe that it's you know even if you're on the pro-israel side yeah. you might not want to invest any money in there. Well, this, this is it. If you're, even if you're a, a completely neutral bystander, mm -hmm. right? Like you're an investor, you have millions yeah. or whatever, even an, even an investor or you own a business or whatever, yeah. you're not going to want to invest in a country that has any sort of political instability yeah. because that makes your investments more risky, right? Like exactly. you're going to be like, okay, well I was thinking of investing in this cool, I don't know, some kind of tech fund in yeah. Israel, but you know what? It's actually, there's so much shit going on there. Mm -hmm. I'll move my money to like the UK or something. Yeah. You know, cause like wherever there's a little bit more stability and less, like less turmoil. <clears throat> exactly. Um, but that makes sense. Um, so I, I, I think for Kamal Kamala, Kamala, Kamala. Kamala. <laughs> Why can't we say his name uh -huh. ever? <laughs> Oh, say her name. I was say her name. Say her name um, ever. Kamala Harris. Yeah. So I don't know. I think I think you're da you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. Like she can't. I don't think she can really. Well, she's she's trying to run as like more because like one of the issues that made Joe Joe Biden very unpopular, especially amongst young people, is this Israel Palestine mm. issue. So she does if she wants to win, she does need to be like a lot more, even if. She's not going to do anything, which like, I really don't know if she's going to do anything, Yeah, but I'm sure there's some things that she could do. I don't fucking know. But like, she needs to appeal more to that side. Mm. Like if she wants to win. You know, what's crazy. What's crazy? Speaking of Israel uh -huh. and all this stuff. Um, I just started watching a random show. I just had it in the background while I was like working on my laptop mm. and stuff. You know, like one of those like just dumb shows that you just put on the background. Sure. So it's called My Undor Unorthodox Life. Have you heard of it? Oh, yeah. yeah I've heard of it. Yeah. Like so the Jewish... Um, I, I've heard of the show. I've so basically show. it's about this lady. It's a real story. <laughs> I, the show itself is a kind of whatever, <laughs> but there's moments where I'm like, Oh, it's kind of interesting, you know? Okay. Cause what happened is there's this lady who has now become like, she's like CEO of some like big company. Yeah. She's become extremely successful, but like she actually, her life didn't start until 43 years old because she was part of this like ultra religious Jewish community. I can't sure. remember what it's called, but like there's like a, a special place in called, um, Monacy or something or Monsi, okay, which is like a town outside, like close to New York or something, where it's like okay, just a huge Jewish community, sure. but like super super mm -hmm. religious. So she was saying like while she was there, part of the reason she got out, she has four kids, and part of the reason she got out is her youngest daughter was a bit of a rebel, okay, and like obviously women in in this community, like you can't wear pants, you have to always wear dresses, oh, okay, okay. but like fully length, you can't <clears throat> show any skin, you have to wear a special thing up here to cover sure. your collarbone, like you can't show your hair, you have to wear wigs. Um, you're not allowed to like, like women get like no education. Oh, like, really? Whatsoever. Like barely any education. Oh. And they're just, there's so many, they're not allowed to sing in public. Like they're, they have, oh, I didn't know that. Like, I like, obviously knew there were some, you it, know, it was, it's in crazy. Like they're not, I don't, I think they're not allowed to drive. Like it's like, really? it's like very insane. And she like talks about all these different things like throughout the show. And that's sure. what I find kind of interesting. But I was just like, so she escaped from that. And a couple of her kids have now escaped from that as yeah. well. And they still see their dad. Like they still have a relationship and he's still in the community. And he's still in there. Okay. But like her parents have like 
you know, don't uh-huh. talk to her anymore and all this stuff. Like right. it's actually crazy. And it just made me think of it. Like, I'm just like, wow, there's things that go on in the world. I know. And then I'm pretty sure they're like, because like, obviously like Israel isn't necessarily like religiously Jewish. Yeah. I don't know. It, it's, it's very complicated. Yeah. But I think like sh- they're, I've heard this, this show because the, whoever the, woman is mm. she's like pro i think she's quite pro israel is she i think so oh. because it's like again it's like and you i think like when you are jewish this is what i heard it's like depending on the community that you're in especially in the states you get like brainwashed from a young age mm. that like israel is like a jewish land and all this stuff and yeah but and i mean so, also we have to reflect like we were brainwashed because like up until oh the, yeah yeah cause, totally cause I I remember growing up because there's mm-hmm. always been a lot of turmoil in this area yeah and I remember growing up and I used to be like those poor Israelis you know like right 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 because I was like oh you know like because Palestine Palestine was like you know always in our media up yeah. until lately it was always like bar- ba- ban- banished or um branded as this like you know really negative kind of yeah. like bad people and all this kind of stuff so it's mm-hmm. been you know like that for us as well. Yeah, exactly. So there's a lot of propaganda. So imagine when you're like in the in the community mm. and you're told like if you're Jewish, you have to support Israel. That's yeah. kind of like the message that a lot of Jewish people get. Yeah. And then you feel like you're not being Jewish if you like don't support Israel, even mm. though there's like so many Jewish people that don't mm. support Israel. But like I think so. I don't know. They're quite like I think there's a lot of brainwashing that happens. I don't know why. Mm. But like anyway. It's kind of crazy how people can fall into like a brainwashing trap though. Like, you know, like yeah. you see those shows where people start following these like crazy cults and stuff and they just I get know. like, like, like twin flames and I know. you know, the seven M or whatever with that yeah. guy. And it's like, people get sucked in and I'm just like, it's scary because I wonder like, I'm not saying that I couldn't get sucked into something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I wonder what it takes, you know, and how we as human are so susceptible. I know. It's all psychology, Daniels. Be the psychology of a the human, oh God. The human brain. Yeah, but anyway, who cares? Um, who cares? Who knows what's gonna happen? Uh, <laughs> <Who> with <cares? laughs> who knows what's gonna happen with Israel? I don't know what their end game is because mm. the thing is, well, their like, end game is they want to wipe out all of Palestine. Yeah, yeah, that's their end game. Yeah, really, exactly. So we don't know what's gonna happen, but. Yeah, Kamala, mm. like if she wants to win, she definitely needs to be a lot more sympathetic, at least toward Palestinian like protesters. Um, but a lot of people are still saying like she's not going to do anything different. Yeah. But who the fuck knows? Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Speaking of speaking of Kamala. 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 <laughs> Let's what, go, can we say I don't know. Name? Is it is it Kamala? Is it Kamala? I think it's Kamala. Kam- Kamala. We do this every episode. We, we need to I stop. Know. <laughs> it's bad. Miss Harris, mm. if you will. Mm. Um, so this is kind of funny. I mean, it, you know, we talked about this actually in the last episode and how the the Republicans, like their main thing and, and how we're like, if this was a strategy on the Democrats part, it's kind of smart how, you know, their main thing when Joe Biden was was um, running was like, oh, you know, he's really old. And like that was their main like counter argument to everything. Yeah. yeah. And then now you have this vibrant Miss Harris, if you will. Miss um, Harris. Um, who could potentially be in the in the campaign. Oh, and you know what? Actually, one other piece of information. Sorry mm. to cut you off. No worries. But I'm used to so it. she <laughs> she picked a VP. Yeah. So the VP apparently, I've never heard of this guy. So apparently his name is Tim Waltz. Yeah. And he is the um governor of Minnesota. Okay. And apparently this guy is very like progressive. Okay. So like, for example, like he, he's um, a flaming homosexual. No, he's, <laughs> he's not. He's actually like kind of like a, like basically a lot of people are like very excited that she picked this guy Okay. because he did things like giving free school lunches to like, you know, kids, uh, I can't remember the details, Right. like free school lunches. He put in like more, um, safe gun laws, like legislation, yeah. um, just like, you know, very progressive kind of ideas. Mm. So like people are saying that, you know, this gives Kamala a, a bigger chance at winning right, 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 because like he's, and he's also quite like, he's very much like a, like seems like a like nice dad, like middle-aged man that's yeah. like, you know, or like a grandpa that's like, you know, caring and yeah. so anyway so i just wanted to put that out there so apparently he's quite like a you know good candidate well that's exciting. so people are getting quite excited over that aspect. that'd be exciting as hell Rosie. Mm-hmm. that'd be nice so 
where I was going with that story about yeah. about how you know the they were pulling on the fact that Joe Biden was old. Well, you know they've replaced him with with Miss Harris, and now <laughs> you know Trump tries everything that he can. Yeah, and he's he's making this claim. Although it was it was proven to be false, like the his mm. his allegations and stuff, and it was really easy to prove. But basically, Trump was like, you know, Harris is, Harris's campaign used AI to alter oh the photo God. of crowd size, so like making it seem like there was more people at this like rally Even, or campaign. Isn't that what he did? I'm pretty sure he did that. Um there was like photos when he was president, which yeah. I still can't believe that even happened. Um, I where can't believe this is happening, Rose? He's running I know, again. Like, I know. C- when he was president, you know how there's like the inauguration ceremony. Mm. I think that they either like showed, you know, like edited images, mm. where basically they like pretended that there were more people in audience. Yeah. So he's basically projecting on what he did. Um, so yeah, I guess. Uh, on a social media post on Sunday, uh, Donald Trump falsely accused Kamala Harris campaign of using artificial intelligence to fabricate crowds at a campaign rally in Michigan last week. Yeah. The picture referenced by Trump shows a large crowd God. waiting outside to see Harris speak at the Tr- Detroit Metropolitan Airport on August 7th. A Harris campaign official told ABC News the photo that Trump called into question was taken by a Harris campaign staffer and that <laughs> it was not modified by AI in any way. God. Like. So a lot of people are saying is like he's doing all of this stuff like, oh, you're not actually as popular as you say you are. Yeah. So that later on he can do the same thing he did last time, which is like deny that he lost the election. Uh, so he's like, I think he's like. I don't know if he's like deliberately doing this or he's just like a bit crazy or a little bit of both. Yeah. But he's kind of like already putting it out there mm. that like, oh, if I lose, it's because like, oh, you use AI images, like you fake the election. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Do you think like, OK, if you were living in the United States of America, <laughs> would you would you have been excited about this, about the step down of Joe Biden? Yeah. Yeah. Re- I think re- so. Being replaced with Harris. Yes. Yeah. So I think that's why a lot of people are showing up as well. It's like people are very excited. Yeah. This is like a fresh kind of, I think like, and and again, I think a lot of people are excited about the Mm. new VP nomination. Yeah. So it doesn't surprise me. Yeah. It says like, uh, Harris's August 7th rally in Detroit was Mm. the third event of her battleground blitz since Minnesota uh, governor Tim Waltz joined the ticket. Yeah. And um, so that was... The campaign touts that more than 15,000 people attend, attended the rally. So people are very excited. Yeah. By comparison, the first public appearance that Trump and his running mate, Senior J.D. Vance, start, uh, shared had had 12,000. Mm-hmm. So there's like more people showing up for this. Uh-huh. And I do think like, because I think a lot of people are saying like, in their opinion, if uh, you know, people living in the U.S., they're like, okay, well, you know, we either have Trump or Biden. We have this either Trump, which is like, obviously, we don't want to vote for him. Some, a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> and then they're like, Biden is like so old, like... We're like, and he's, yeah, he's feels like we don't have a choice. We have no choice here. Like what are, what are our options? Whereas now you have Harris coming in and it's like, okay, now we have a vibrant young representation uh-huh. or younger representation. Um, so yeah, this could be a really, really oh God. interesting election. Yeah, it's going to be very, uh, there's going to be a lot of crazy news. I'm sure that comes out yeah. of this election. Well, and they, they said like preliminary polls, which again, I don't know how they get this data, but remember we're reading like yeah. the preliminary polls are already like favoring um, mm-hmm, Harris to mm-hmm. Trump. So well, this should be the easiest to win. Like, I don't understand. Again, like, we're yeah. talking about a convicted felon. I know. Like, what are we talking about here? But he gonna make America great again, oh Rose. Oh, my God. He gonna make God. it great again. Um, yeah. Mm. It, well, well, anyways. Yeah. Uh, anyway, people are quite excited. It's a, it's a, it's quite an exciting uh, election, I guess. But it's, it's so rapidly that it's all happening within like... I know. Literally, like, the election, I think, is November 4th or 5th or something. It's like... This it's in is, just a few months. Yeah. Yeah. And there have been like switch, 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 dumb, bum, bum, yeah. bum. Yeah. Anyways. God dang. Um, we'll see what happens. Mm-hmm. We'll see what happens. Um, it's going to be interesting. And I think Trump is also like kind of like avoiding doing a debate with Kamala as well. Because mm. he probably like with Biden, it's like he just has to be there and like be able to form a sentence <laughs> to win the debate. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. But with like Kamala, like it's going to be difficult. Yeah. You know, like, cause like, you know, and she used to be like a district attorney, a prosecutor or something. Yeah. So she can probably grill him. Oh yeah. On like, and like some of the, like he, she's been doing a pretty good job at her, uh, rallies and stuff. Like just mm. some of the things that she's saying, like she'd be like, Oh, I used to be a district attorney and I dealt with like criminals and blah, 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 blah. So I'm used to dealing with that, with his kind or something uh. like that. <laughs> Oh, 
and then Tim Waltz said something like this. This moment went viral where he was like, oh, God, how did he say it? He was like, oh, like these fell uh, these criminals that we're going to. Oh God, how did he say? He's like, basically, he's like, we're going to get all of these crimes off the streets mm. or all these crimes. Blah, 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 and, and I'm not just talking about Trump's crimes or something like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, it was really like they're doing a good job. The only kind of hiccup that I heard of is uh, Kamala getting mad at the protesters. Yeah. So, mm. I mean, if that's the only hiccup, then she'd be doing OK. Yeah. Not yeah. bad. Not bad. I guess we'll see what happened. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see here. Oh, God. <laughs> What other stories we, we got? We got another. We got one more. We got, we got know, one more. I know we got one more. What be the stories? Did you pull it up? Is oh, it di- oh, this story. Yes. So because we're in capitalist hellscape. Yes. And this is why I want to bring this up because we are in capitalist hellscape. And Rose, I want you to do me a favor on your <laughs> phone. I want you to look up Disney's um, net profit from last year. <laughs> just just because I, I want to put this out here, guys, because I, I'm just going to use. Disney Plus. Oh, I guess it's just, just Disney. Disney. Yeah, Disney. Disney um, well, why don't I put Disney plus net profit? 2020. Yeah. I don't know if it'll show it, but yeah. 2023. Yeah. Okay. So this, <laughs> uh, so this is in Disney's entertainment streaming business. Eeks out. What is that? Like gives out. Oh, surprise profit. Surprise profit as Disney Plus core subscribers top 117 million. So Disney Plus, Disney's entertainment streaming segment anchored by Disney Plus scored its first profitable quarter. I don't know if this is the what we're looking for here. No, I just want to know, just, just in general, just, no, just do Disney. Just do okay, Disney. Just do Disney? Okay. Disney's, uh, Disney's uh, Disney net profit. Pro- yeah. Okay. 2023. So Disney net income for the 12 months ending March 20. 20- March 31st, 2024 mm-hmm. was 1.695 billion, yeah. a 58.87% decline year over year. Mm-hmm. Disney's annual net income for 2023 was 2.354 billion. Okay, so let's just keep this in mind though. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's dropped a bit, right? But like it's still net profit 1.65 something billion dollars, right? And we have to remember net profit is after all their expenses have been paid. Right. So that is profit. So this is what's going to the shareholders is exactly. what you're saying. Essentially, because that means all your expenses have been paid, all your bills, all your staff, all your right. compensation. Yeah. So that is, you are hugely fucking profitable. Okay. Yeah. So, but of course it's not profitable enough. Yeah. So the reason we <laughs> want to bring this up guys is it's funny because th- th- there was another story about this and the CFO of Disney came forward and was like, we work hard at Disney and we deserve this. Like, you know, we've worked, we deserve this price increase, you know, from what we're offering consumers and blah, blah, blah. So apparently the Disney plus subscriptions are about to get a big hike in October mm. as if consumers aren't hit enough everywhere else mm. um, up to, tw- so it hasn't been confirmed yet because sure. obviously they're, you know, mulling it over whatever. But the fees could go up by 25%. 25%. Which is huge, guys. That's an annual... Th- th- this is, again, where are the consumer protections for these things? Yeah. You know, like, it's like being able to increase anything, a subscription, a service that you're providing, like a 25% increase is ludicrous. Mm. How much is it already? Let's see here. Disney Plus is getting a significant price hike in the U.S. and some other countries may not be too far behind. Mm -hmm. The monthly cost of Disney Plus will rise from $13.99 to $15.99 for the full ad-free service Mm -hmm. and from $7.99 to $9.99 for the ad-supported tier. So if you have ads, you're you're paying... $10. $10. Yeah. You're going to pay $10. Yeah. Um, so these changes come into effect on October 17th and the price rises will, don't just affect Disney plus Hulu will get bumped from is Hulu part of also Hulu must also be owned by Disney. Yeah. Hulu will get bumped from seven ninety nine to nine ninety nine for the ad supported service and a full whack version sees a $1 rise mm. to eighteen ninety nine a month. So all, yep. Yeah, they're all going to raise the prices. Yeah. Fun, fun times. So, you know, I just, <laughs> it's, it's, it's like we as consumers are just being hit at all angles. Mm-hmm, you know what I mm-hmm. mean? Like, it's not like we're just having one thing go up. It's like ev- everything's going up. Everything's going up. And everything's it's like, going up. It's like, what there is going to be a breaking point. Like people are already like being like, I can't afford this shit. Well, especially like things like entertainment services. I just feel like, you know, we're, people are already like stretched thin on like literal, you know, ne- necessities. Like groceries. That they're going to start like not 
doing things like Disney Plus anymore. Like they're going to start cutting back. So I don't know if raising it is even like a good business decision, to be honest Mm -hmm. with you. Well, I think I think we're going to see this more. And this is like a prediction that I have. Like, I'm not sure exactly how this is going to go, but like... Doom and gloom, guys. Um, but <laughs> Daniel, no, they're used to it. I know. You guys are <laughs> used to it by now. But like all of these, I'm just going to say it, all these greedy corporations that just keep on, you know, making billions of, of profit a year is just not good enough. We have to squeeze more and more. Uh-huh. But like people, people can't afford it. So what I foresee happening is like, obviously it's already started happening. People are scaling back. But we're going to unfortunately start to see a lot of those like auxiliary services that are more kind of nice to haves. Yeah. We're going to see this shut down. Like, you know, a lot of restaurants I foresee, you know, they're yeah, going to, people yeah. are going to start cutting back on going out to eat. So people have already started. Exactly. People are cutting back on, you know, fancy coffee. So we're probably going to see coffee shops, things like this close. Also, um, all of these companies, what they're doing is inadvertently good. They're going to bite themselves in the ass. Right. So I'm going to use Disney as an example and it, it might not go exactly this way, but I'm just going to use it as like kind of an example, but like, Okay, so 2024, they made like 1.6 billion in profit, right? Now they're saying, okay, we're going to increase the subscription. We're going to increase the subscription. People can afford it. It's fine. But what they're going to end up doing is, and ultimately, it is an, an, an luxury service or mm-hmm, something that mm-hmm. is additional. People are going to scale back. They're going to be like, you know yeah. what? My groceries have also gone up. My other bills have gone up. I can't afford Disney Plus anymore because mm-hmm. now you're putting the, before it was a value to me. Now it's too expensive. And then they're actually going to harm themselves because they're going to lose more subscribers. Yeah. So it's going to be like, and then they're going to have to drop their price because like, I know, you know, or because if they keep putting it up like this and they start and they, and once it starts, there's going to be a shift at a certain price point, right? Where people yeah. are going to like really scale back. And then we're going to see these companies be like, shit, mm-hmm. then they're going to have to be like, okay, well we're going to have to have promo deals or something yeah. to get consumers. And I heard in the States, and don't quote me on this. I was like reading an article or something about, I want to say it was like Walmart or maybe one of these other big chains. I know McDonald's had reported for the first time in like a long time, their profits were down, you know, because like McDonald's always has, seems to be growing. Like, like it, it had decreased yes. in profit, yeah. even though they're still making They're still making profit. money, but it's right. decreased. And this is like the first time it's happened in a while. Oh. So they're all freaking out. But it's like, again, people are cutting back. Like people can't afford well, this anymore. Well, even fast food's so fucking expensive now. Well, people in the comment section on this McDonald's video yeah. were like, it costs $70 to feed a family of four at McDonald's. Like I am not going yeah, there. It's like, it's McDonald's. Exactly. And like, like, again, I get that cost of food has gone up and all that stuff. Yeah. But like, it's fucking McDonald's, bitch. Yeah. Like. Am I really going to fucking pay $20 a person to eat at fucking McDonald's? No. And this no. is the, this is the crazy thing is we keep, and, and we all have this narrative because, you know, the cost of things have gone up relative, like, mm. you know, cost of labor, sure. cost of food, all of this stuff. But what we can't get away from guys and we can't ignore is yes, for maybe the mom and pop shops, it's a slightly different story. But for some of these massive corporations, yeah. such as a McDonald's, right? Their profit, they pay their CEO. Like, I can't remember what it was like. 20- this is what kills me. $20 million. Stop paying your fucking CEO so much. I know. But their exact team are making so much. Their profitability is so high. You're telling me that you can't lower the price and take a little bit less profit? Fuck off. Yeah. Like, okay. like Disney Plus is a perfect example. If they did nothing and didn't change anything, they would probably be on track to make again $1.6 billion in profit again this year. Okay. Why is that so I wrong? Should, I have a stupid question. Yeah. As a, as a business graduate, I really yeah. should not... I should know this. Yeah. But also I feel like we have... Okay, so... It's a this is a public publicly traded company, right? Yeah. So stockholders, shareholders, whatever. Yeah. So if um how much does annual profit decrease uh increase? How much does that impact shareholder price like share prices? That's a very good question, Rose. And is it it's a good really, question? It's 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 complicated, it's right? It's complicated. Okay, yeah, well, it's not that stupid of a question. It's not that stupid because the thing is, because I've thought about this as well. Because like, they, they, because like, yeah. Let Let's say you hold a hundred shares at Disney. Yeah. And then you see, like, because like, it said, even though they are profitable, mm. it's gone down. Yeah. And obviously, the, the shit, the fucking stock market is like up and down, up and down. It's yeah. kind of crazy shit. So, like, are you? Does that mean you're losing money on the stocks, or does it not mean? Well, it could mean a different factors, right? So, sure. for example, let's say Disney's profits down. But let's say the market sees that there's a ton of growth opportunities for them. They forecast that it's going to grow more in the next yeah. few years. That will impact what the shares are kind of valued at. Right. Because it's all fucking gambling. Exactly. I, this is what The piss- whole thing is gambling. This is what pisses me off, guys. And I, <laughs> I think Game- GameStop was a perfect example. They say that there are certain certain fundamentals that drive a stock price. No. But, but, but again, we've seen like crazy things happen in the market. And... <laughs> 
just because a company is not profitable one year or less profitable. I mean, look at Netflix. Netflix for the longest time it wasn't making money. Right. Yet and yet their, their share shares prices. were going right. up. Right. So, so it really doesn't have a big impact. I mean, it could. Yeah. But like, ultimately, it's all about what people think is going to happen, yeah. essentially. And also, I feel like your share value also, too. It, I mean, it's obviously tied to the company. But it's also kind of like if I own a thousand shares, well, the value of those shares is how much you're willing to pay for them. Right. At the end of the day, because I, if I want to sell my shares, there has to be someone in the market that's going to buy them. Right. And then they kind of like, if they think it's a good value, yeah, they're like, okay, cool. I'll buy it. You right. know what I mean? But obviously they might do their own research and be like, oh, I think this company's good and blah, 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 blah. I want right. to buy their shares, but it's... So it, then would it just impact their dividends? What do you mean? I mean, it could impact many different things. Okay. Yeah. Guys. It gets complicated. I think they make it extra complicated so that people don't understand it. Yeah. I mean, the whole share thing is just like, it's crazy. It's all, it's literally gambling. Yeah. Like it's, it's actually fucking gambling. It's just fancy gambling. Mm. And we've, we've made this system where it's like, oh, these fucking grown ass men that are just like fucking around with numbers. They are some, like, we're supposed to fucking find them to be like, you know, the like successful, admirable, the yeah. successful people in society, you know? Exactly. Like, yeah. oh, investment bankers. Oh, like all they fucking. All they do is fucking fuck around with numbers. Mm -hmm. And it's just like gambling. It's literally gambling. It is. Well, and you know why a lot of the wealthy people, well, why wealthy people in general, they'll have a lot of their wealth tied up in like stocks and shares and all this kind of stuff. Well, one, because the growth opportunity. Yeah. But also two, when they do want to cash out, they don't pay as much like tax. Right. Right. Because it's capital gains. Exactly. Yeah. Although that's kind of changed a little bit in Canada, like with new capital right. gains legislation coming in. But even still, you can get up to like 250K. Which is so fucking ridiculous. Yeah. And like it, I just feel like income tax, if it should be charged. At 100%. Like, yeah, like it should be charged. Like, yeah. like, I don't know. Like, like this is my, this is my thought process and people are going to think I'm very left wing for this. <laughs> but my thought process. I think process, people already know we're quite left wing. Yeah, we're very left. You guys, you, you guys know this. You mm -hmm. know about this podcast. My thought process, and it's the same for stock options. So for years, companies have granted executive stock options because when they go to exercise stock options, let's say they make $5 million on their stock options. Well, they only get taxed on half. They get taxed on 2.5 million. So they get 2.5 million tax free. Yeah. For them that yeah. they can take into their bank account. The other 2.5 million, they'll get taxed at whatever their tax sure. rate is. So like right away, there's huge incentive for executives to get this. Capital gains works the same way. It's like if you buy a share of a company, you sell it later and you make a profit of $1,000, you only have, you get $500 to yourself sure. for free. And then 500 of it gets taxed at whatever your tax rate is. Yeah. My question is like... And this is in Canada? Yeah, this is okay. Canada. Sorry, this is Canada, guys. Yeah. So, but my question is, if that's the case, right? Mm -hmm. Like... Technically, if you've made a thousand dollars on that shares on those shares, that's a thousand dollars of income to you. Mm -hmm. You should really have to pay tax on that. Oh, I agree. You know, like and, and, and it doesn't incentivize hard work because mm -hmm. all you're doing is fucking around with numbers. Yeah, and people will get mad because like, and I, you know what, I deal shares. I yeah, I buy shares. Nice I to, sell yeah, shares. Exactly. I I would not necessarily like to pay a hundred percent tax, but at the same time, I don't but mind. You, I mean, not you mean like you wouldn't want to pay tax on a hundred percent of the profits. Exactly. So you're not paying a hundred percent tax. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, yeah. But at the same time, I think to myself, well, actually, the the ironic or not the ironic thing, the thing is. We forget like, yeah, we might all have little shares here and there in our brokerage accounts, mm -hmm. but really, and the numbers don't lie. You can Google this in any country. It's like majority of those shares are yeah. held at, with like a certain percentage of the population, right? Yeah. Like the ma vast majority. They're the ones that are getting majority of the capital gains, right? Right. So. Well, it's interesting because I'm pretty sure, I mean, again, and I completely agree with mm. everything you're saying. Yeah. Uh, because, and this is, I think this is actually a huge problem and this is what creates a lot of income disparity. Yeah. Right. Because. If you have money, imagine like, let's say you already have, I don't know, a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if that's not a lot of money. Okay. No. Let's say it's a, a million. half a million dollars. If you have half a million dollars, you're probably working a bit, but then you also put away some for investments. Mm -hmm. What is isn't incentivizing you to work when you are going to be taxed on your income, like your income of you working yep. uh, a lot more than when you just put away money yeah. and make a lot more and not have to fucking pay taxes on it exactly and i'm and it says here in um in the u.s mm. it says um so for short 
short-term capital gains taxes, they are paid at the same rate that you'd pay on your ordinary income. Okay, so... So, sure. But yeah. long-term capital gains taxes is tax applies to assets held m- for more than a year, which, yeah. you know, a lot That's of people hold for more than a year. Exactly. Long-term capital gains tax rates are 0%, 15%, and 20%, depending on your income. So much lower exactly. than income taxes. But th- and this is why people always wonder, they're like, how do these like mega wealthy people get away with paying such little tax? This is why. It's because they have their money in these types of vehicles where it's like, you know, it's... A, it's held in there. Exactly. Uh, so you, you're not necessarily taking it out. It's just like fucking held. This, this is all... This was, <laughs> another, this was another thing. Actually, I saw a TikTok on this, guys. And it was so funny because they were like, okay, for example, let's say I'm... Um, uh, Elon Musk, right? Sure. A lot of my wealth is tied up in Tesla stock. Okay? Sure. So I hold a shit ton of Tesla stock. Mm-hmm. Um, it's valued. Let's say it's valued at like, I don't know, a hundred million dollars, but I don't actually have that hundred million dollars yet. Right. Cause I haven't cashed it yeah. in. I'm only holding it as shares. I technically don't have to pay tax or anything on it. Right. Yeah. But at the same time, so the government won't tax you on those, that money, even though it's like, you know, maybe it's been gaining or whatever. You don't get taxed on that until you cash it in. But so because it's not considered an asset yet, really, sure. because you haven't cashed in sure. that, you know, that value. But you can go to a bank and you can get a loan. Oh, right. Based on the value of what you have in shares. Right. So this is what also the wealthy people are doing. I don't know the full complexity of it. So but you essentially, get a loan and basically the loan, you can spend your loan. So essentially you spend the money mm. that you have tied up yeah. because you're in the form of a loan. Yep. And then remember, though, too, of course, with a loan, you have to pay interest. Sure. But the imp- interest, depending on how you do it, it's a tax write-off, right? Oh, so God there's damn ways motherfuckers. To, like, there's ways to fuck around with well, the I mean, system, It's guys. almost as if the rich people made the rules, so. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, pretty much they did. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Exactly. But but anyway, going back to Disney, I just think, guys, it might not be this price point. It might not be the next I- increase. I really feel like in the next year or so, just yeah. given the direction that everything's going... There is going to be a point where some of these services are going to price people out of the market mm-hmm. and people are consumers are going to react. And this is what's going to happen. I think we're going to see it shortly is people are going to be like, you know what? Fuck you, Disney Plus. Yeah. And like they're going to lose. Maybe ha- like imagine they lost like half their subscribers. Right. Because of the price increases. People are like, right. fuck this shit. Can oh, you imagine? God. But you know what's thing- the thing about these subscription services right which is obviously like i honestly at this point i don't even know how much money i'm spending on fucking random subscriptions yeah um and most of them are for like my job yeah. so like it's still like it's okay it's but part like, of your I business mean, put like 20 dollars here 30 dollars here fucking however money here and it's yeah. like i have no idea how much i'm spending but the problem with these subscriptions is that like because it's coming on your bill every month and it's you're already if you're already a disney subscriber yeah and you're not really most people are not paying attention okay this is the problem they're you know and like they're not going to notice a maybe a 1 2 dollar increase yeah and then you know so i actually don't even know if a lot of people are going to unsubscribe because with subscriptions you barely half half the time you don't even remember that it's there it's true because well they i think they've also done market research as to what price point people will start mm. noticing right so i think again if they start crossing exactly. certain thresholds then sure it's gonna people will notice sure because you're point, right yes ten dollars because like my amazon prime is ten dollars yeah. a month i don't notice the ten dollars a yeah. month and right? you're someone that would notice like yeah. you check your statement i check my bills but like most of, i would say the majority of people don't check yeah the majority of people don't really look until At it hits a not certain, on a regular until it hits a certain amount Yes. Then actually people will start noticing. So maybe that's $50. Maybe that's $60. Not all people though. Like yeah. some people. Yeah. But a lot of people, they're just like, da, 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 like da, da. true. But then, but I, I, I agree with you. But then when it comes down to it and those people that are like this, blah, blah, mm. <laughs> they go to get their groceries and they're starting, things are starting to right. get tighter for them. Sure. Sure. I feel like people, I feel like a lot of, cause I'm, I but mean, then they swipe their credit card. This is true. But then what if their credit cards are maxed out? They get another one. You like. People are like the credit card world mm. has fucked people over. Oh, it has hundred percent. So I think like people and like, I've seen all these videos where people are being interviewed mm. and they're in like mountains of debt and they have all this credit card debt and all this stuff. And the way that they take, they talk about it. Mm. It's like, Oh, Oh, it's fine. Like I saw this really good TikTok about someone yeah. that was talking about credit cards and they were like, look again, the credit card industry is fucked. And they said as an individual, right? What you should do if you have a credit card is you should never 
make a purchase on your credit card that mm-hmm. you don't have the money for in your account right then and there. Yeah. They said like, for example, let's say you want to buy a couch on credit on your credit card because you get the points. Well, let's say the couch is two grand. Don't fucking put it on your credit card until you have two grand set aside yeah. to pay it off because it's not free money. You're using it to get the points. And, and I think the thing with credit that's like really f- like the reason it's such a slippery slope, right, is if you overspend on your credit card, let's say you carry a balance of like $1,000 mm. one month. That means the next month you have to take whatever your budget was. And if you wanted to pay it off right away, or even if you wanted to pay off part of that thousand, slowly pay it off, your budget is going to shrink by two, $300. Mm. If you want to pay off two or $300 of that credit card balance that, and, and then, and then what happens is you have to work with a smaller budget mm. that you're struggling with already. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then you end up putting more credit on and more credit. So yeah. like it becomes, this vi- and then you end up in this like hole where your interest charges mm-hmm. are so high that like, even if you're putting three, $400 on your credit card, you're only paying off like 50 bucks. Yeah. It gets crazy guys. Like exactly. It's if, scary. It's it actually is. scary. But this is why people end up in like so much debt. And like mm. people, I think like in North America, I think it's a like very heavily North American problem. I'm pretty sure other people have it too. But I think mm. in North America, it's like severe. Yeah. Like this whole credit card culture, debt culture is like even more severe, I think. Well, I, t- I, t- I told you about that TikTok I saw with this economist, right? That was talking specifically about credit cards. And he was saying about how since like the 19... I want to say since like the 1950s. Sure. Whenever credit cards became popular? No, no, no. So he was talking about how we've made a societal shift. And he was saying up until like the 1950s, maybe it was 1960s, it was like you could afford to have the the dad work, mom stays at home Mm, with the kids, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. live a good life, Mm -hmm. right? But these, of course, greedy corporations, part of capitalism, Sure. the prices go up, the prices go up, the prices go up. And the wages have remained relatively stagnant, right? So now we're realizing, oh, hang on a second we're now having a little bit of a gap between what I'm earning and what my expenses sure. are. That's I'm, where credit cards come in. Well, well, not right away. Oh. So then what happened is we see the entrance of women right. into the workplace. Women working. That was partly that with the war and there's other things too. But he was saying, then we start having two partners working, right? Yeah. And for a while that worked. You mm. know, you know, uh, the 1980s, 1990s, sure. it was like you have both partners working, you could live a pretty good life. And then he's like, but things keep going up, keep going up. And both the wages for the men and the women generally like goes up a little bit, but doesn't follow inflation. Mm. Then we get into like the 2000s and now you have two, both parents working right. full-time jobs. And there's still now, now all of a sudden there's a little gap between what we're, what they're earning and kind of the lifestyle they've been used to or, yes. you know, all this other stuff. What closes that gap? Credit cards. Mm. And that's why you, we've seen, I think overall in, in the last kind of 10, 20 years, the amount of credit card debt per individual has skyrocketed Ugh. because it's covering that um, gap right. that people have. And, you know, where's all this money going? Well, it's going to these companies. It's so bad. Yeah. yeah. Cause like if, you know, if you can't afford Disney plus now, cause you're already living on credit and then the price goes up, you're putting more money on credit. Yeah. The money's going to Disney. The money's going. Yeah. Or to wherever you're paying your. I think exactly. And, and the issue also is like, when with the rise like when capitalism was rising and like you know when the economy was still like you know on the rise and yeah all these companies and it's like one part of capitalism is constantly selling you know the next best thing the new yeah. thing the new service the new product so we get very you know as humans in this world we get caught up in this yeah. so we want to buy the ne- next thing we're used to buying everything we're used to buying the new macbook the new mm. iphone we have to try the new restaurant we have to go and mm. you know subscribe to disney plus we got to get all the entertainment all the good things so we get used to all these nice things all these nice things mm. and then we can't afford it yeah and then here comes the credit card exactly to cover that gap <laughs> and on that positive note that damn guys <laughs> on that positive note Whatever you do, guys, do not overspend on your credit cards. Mm-hmm. We're not constituting financial advice here, but try to make exactly. those decisions. Because Make good decisions. Yes. You okay? don't want to get into a hole. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, and for everyone else, guys, <laughs> don't forget to hit that follow on whatever podcast platform you're listening to us on. You'll get updated as soon as there's the next public episode as well. Uh, check it us out on YouTube, guys. Subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up. Show us some love in the comment section down below. And we will see you guys all next week. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.